Alrighty. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, in the interest of respecting everybody's time, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, before we start, I do want to note very quickly that I am uh, out in the field today, and so I am sitting in front of a uh, of a public library pirating their Wi-Fi. So please excuse any background noise um, you might hear. Uh, if for the duration of this presentation you have any questions, please feel free to use the Q&A feature uh, in the uh, toolbar, uh, the Zoom toolbar at the bottom of your screen. And without further ado, here we go. My name is Josh. I am a crew leader and the South Coast Coordinator, South Coast Stewardship Coordinator, excuse me, with Trail Keepers of Oregon. And uh, before we get too far, I'd like to shout out the Oregon Coast Visitors Association for kindly and generously funding an awful lot of the work that Trail Keepers of Oregon is able to do uh, out here on the Oregon Coast Trail. We're talking a little bit about scouting. What is it? Why do we do it? Scouting is the process of surveying a trail for the purpose of cataloging maintenance and repair issues. Uh, TKO engages in frequent scouting activities to assist land managers in like the uh, US Forest Service or state parks in setting maintenance priorities. Uh, after spending uh, a few trail parties with us, you'll develop trail eyes, opening a whole new dynamic to the hiking experience. Uh, as you note, issues needing to be addressed and recent work performed. Uh, TKO is currently in the process of cataloging sections of the Oregon Coast Trail to better uh, set priorities with primarily Oregon State Parks, but also the Forest Service. Speaking of trail eyes, uh, I've got a short video that we have produced recently. Uh, this video is available on our website, in our uh, Trail Keepers University page, and also on our YouTube page. But it talks a little more about trail eyes. I'm going to go ahead and play that for you right now. Hello, future trail keepers. I'm Josh, a crew leader with Trail Keepers of Oregon. In today's video, we're going to talk about trail eyes, how to develop them, and how to use them to help TKO maintain your trails. Before we start, I'd like to give a shout out to the Oregon Coast Visitor Association for generously funding all of the good work that TKO does on the Oregon Coast Trail. What makes a good trail? A good trail is clear of debris and sheds water early and often to prevent erosion to the trail. A good trail has an open corridor, free of any overhanging or encroaching brush or limbs, and solid tread to provide firm footing. How can we tell if it's a good trail? We work to develop what trail builders call trail eyes. It's knowing how a trail should look and identifying when a trail doesn't meet those standards. You don't need to know how to fix a problem to identify it and report it to TKO. In this video, we will show you examples of common issues so you can go out and hike your trails and let Trail Keepers of Oregon know where the work needs to be done. Battle the brush. One of the most common issues seen on the trail is encroaching vegetation or brush. Most trail corridors should be about six feet wide. If you stand in the middle of the trail and reach your arms out to either side, you shouldn't touch any vegetation. Mind the mud. A good trail should shed water. This means no mud puddles or trails turned stream. When there's a muddy spot in the trail, hikers will frequently walk around it, widening the trail and increasing its environmental impact. Water running down the trail will erode it and send more silt into the streams. That's bad for fish. Log a log. When logs fall across the trail, it forces hikers to find a way around, frequently creating user trails that cause erosion and are often unsafe. Help us catalog these logs by getting a rough idea of their diameter along with their location. You can use your arm or hand to get an approximate measurement. It's important to stay safe. We highly recommend you always measure a log from the uphill side, and we strongly suggest you never attempt to move a log by yourself. Fatal failures. Sometimes nature takes over and destroys a section of trail. 
This can be due to a landslide covering the whole trail in debris or a washout wiping out the trail entirely. These can be difficult or impossible to get around and usually result in the creation of user paths that are both unsafe and unsustainable. Help TKO identify where your trails need the most work. Unsound structures. Occasionally, the only way to have a trail is to build a structure around a particularly challenging piece of terrain. This includes bridges, stairs, culverts, and crib walls. Every one of these needs upkeep and can create hazardous conditions if not maintained. A culvert can clog, washing out the trail around it, and wooden bridges, stairs, and boardwalks can rot or break, creating an unsafe condition for hikers to navigate. Trailkeepers wants to encourage you to hike your trails and let us know where they need uplifting and maintaining. Check out our Trailize Sheet tutorial to see how you can tell us about your trails using your new Trailize. Keep an eye on our event calendar for a volunteer event near you. So that's an example of the sort of stuff that we're looking for when we're out scouting trails and uh, developing our trail eyes. Um, a little bit of background on the Oregon Coast Trail. Uh, declared hikeable in 1988, it's nearly 400 miles from the Columbia River to the California border and has uh, approximately 200 miles of beach walking, 180 miles of trail and road walking. Uh, OPRD, or more commonly known as State Parks, uh, they're the, uh, the chief land manager for the Oregon Coast Trail. Uh, the, uh, the Oregon Coast Trail does unfortunately have gaps of approximately 45 miles of highway shoulder walking. The uh, state parks has recently been directed by Oregon State Legislature to develop plans to close gaps in conjunction with community-led gap committees. Uh, this process led to state parks partnering with Trail Keepers of Oregon to help address these gaps and deferred maintenance across the whole trail system. Uh, one of the gaps we are in the process of closing and have nearly completed is at the south side of Neocani Mountain, and we are currently working on the north side of Cascade Head to reopen a Forest Service trail that has been op uh, closed for over a decade. One of the last sections of actual trail on the Oregon coast runs through the beautiful Samuel Boardman Scenic Corridor. Sam Boardman was the first state park superintendent serving from 1929 to 1950. He's often called the father of the state park system. One of his final acts as superintendent was to assemble a spectacular 12 mile stretch of coastline north of Brookings for a state scenic area that was ultimately named after him. The Oregon Coast Trail traverses the entire 12 miles of the scenic corridor, providing fantastic views of an ever-changing coastal landscape. It transitions from wooded trail to open headlands to sandy beach. In late February, TKO staff and volunteers spent several days scouting sections of the Sam Boardman Corridor in order to develop a maintenance plan with state parks. This plan included the hiring of a short-term intern based out of Harris Beach to lead crews of volunteers in stewardship activities. In addition to scouting trails, we wanted to start establishing a close relationship with state park staff. We also wanted to start posting flyers and talking with local volunteer organizations to begin to build awareness and interest in stewardship events. After scouting approximately eight miles of trail, we found, first and foremost, scenery I frankly was not expecting. I don't want to speak for my coworkers and volunteers, but I think it's safe to say we were blown away not only by amazing beach and sea stack views, but also by the sheer diversity afforded by one stretch of land sandwiched between a highway and the Pacific Ocean. However, more pertinent to our mission, we found plenty of trail maintenance and repair to keep us and our volunteers busy. We found a great variety of maintenance needs on this stretch of trail, from wet spots, 
that require drainage work, basic vegetation work in the form of overgrown areas in need of brushing and logs blocking the trail, roots intruding into the trail and trails that need to be sloughed to restore original tread width. And I'd like to try and give you a good example here where I've drawn this red line. All of this is where the original trail used to go. And over time, material has sloughed in from downhill and narrowed the trail. There are a lot of spots where we need to clear these out and restore the original trail width. There are also larger scale projects, such as this steep approach down to the beach from Whales Head Viewpoint. Ideally, there would be stairs here to mitigate the steep grade and, and address persistent erosion issues. And it's hard to tell, I know, from these pictures, but the if you look in the upper left, the, uh, you can see the beach sand. You're looking almost straight down a hill on this unfortunate trail. We also found areas where a slide or washout has occurred, removing the trail entire, entirely. These fatal failures lead to the creation of unsafe, unsustainable user trails, as mentioned in our Trailize video. And the dotted line on the left of the picture on the right is a user trail created to bypass the lack of trail that was washed out right here. And so now you've got folks coming up and around and this is an unsafe trail that's going to create erosion issues. And on the picture on the left of your screen you can kind of see where the trail used to come through here and off camera folks have uh, created their own workaround. Projects like the slide repairs take a lot of planning and rely on a strong relationship and trust between TKO and land managers. One great way we build that trust is through frequent stewardship events and quality volunteer experiences that result in quality trail maintenance. Fortunately and excitingly, TKO has just brought on a short-term intern in the South Coast area. Meet John, a seasonal state parks employee based in Port Orford, who's come aboard to help us engage volunteers in the area they know, love, and use. And that will result in our ability to run volunteer events every weekend in the Sam Boardman Corridor and at Cape Sebastian uh, and Pistol River for the next three months. We really want to encourage folks to come out and volunteer with us. You can keep an eye on our calendar at trailkeepersoforgan.org trailkeepers slash events. We've got volunteer opportunities happening in the San Boardman Corridor every weekend until October. We've also got volunteer opportunities happening on the North Coast in the Neocani uh, Oswald West State Park area. Stay tuned to our Facebook page where we'll keep posting Oregon Coast Trail related content, keep you all updated on our events, and keep you engaged in training opportunities and digital excitement. If you check out our website and explore our Trail Keepers of Oregon University, you'll find a scout lab that will teach you how to scout your own trails and report what issues need to be addressed to us so we can have conversations with land managers about what maintenance your trails need. I want to thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me this afternoon and I would like to give you an opportunity to ask any questions you might have in the question and answer function of Zoom there. I'll give a moment for anyone to shout out if they have any questions.
it looks like I have designed this webinar to be informative to the point where y'all don't have any questions, and that means I've done a great job, so I appreciate it. Once again, I want to thank you for your time, and please keep an eye out on our Facebook page for updates on our stewardship experiences. Have a wonderful afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Oh, I had a last-minute question come in. You got me. Corker66 asks if we have specific jurisdiction. Uh, and we don't. We will work anywhere that we can enter into a volunteer agreement with the land manager. Uh, we have worked um, county parks, forest service lands, state parks, uh, other local government. Um, we do work on some um, private lands, camps, that, that kind of thing. Generally speaking, we focus on public lands. Um, it's not something where we can just jump in uh, and go to work immediately. We have to enter into agreements with the land managers, but we absolutely work on federal lands. We're in the process of entering into a volunteer agreement with the uh, Sayusla National Forest, and we have a long history of working on lands in the Mount Hood National Forest and in the Columbia Gorge National Scenic Area. Barring any further questions, uh, I again want to thank you all for uh, joining me this afternoon, and uh, I hope wherever you're located, you have a wonderful day, and uh, I hope we will see you uh, at a volunteer event soon.